Thank you. Thanks, Pedro. So, well, hello, everyone. Um, I have first a couple of slides explaining the workshop that we are going to be doing today, but it's going to be a hands on workshop. Okay, so we are going to be programming, I promise. So I'm, I'm starting with a, a, a small introduction to, to Apache Bean. So we have already seen this in the previous sessions, but just in case someone is joining uh, this session uh, for the first time. So Apache Bean is a big data processing framework that has this unified model for batch and streaming, and that it may run also in uh, many different platforms. Today, we are going to be developing a batch pipeline in Python. Okay, and we are going to be running it locally. Okay, so, so we will not run it elsewhere. Uh, but the code that we are going to be doing today, so you can easily run it on Dataflow, Flink, Spark, uh, whatever. So the, uh, one of the main features of uh, Apache Bean is that it's available in different programming languages. For today, we will use the Python SDK. Okay, so because, well, Python is a very popular language. We could have done it in Scala, in Go, in Java, any other language, but uh, so I chose Python because it's probably more, more popular. And there are all, lots of runners. So here I include only some examples, okay, that because there are even more than the ones that are shown in the slide. And today we are going to be using the direct runner. For the direct runner, you just need to have Python and Apache being installed in local, and that's it. So you don't need anything else, okay. So um, in order to follow this uh, workshop, you should have Python and you should have Apache Bean installed as a dependency. Uh, um, if you have the repository of the of the Bean College in the day one, that's a, a folder with all the code and all the requirements that you need for uh, for following the workshop today. But I, I will remind that uh, later. So this is an example of a pipeline uh, in Apache Bean. The pipeline has inputs that it may have more one or more inputs and it may have more than one or more outputs here we have two inputs and one output the pipeline that we're going to be doing today will have only one input and one output and then we apply transformations uh, to this um, to this uh, um, data that we have read and then we write it elsewhere okay so today what we are going to be doing in the in the workshop is our input is going to be this uh, novel the don quixote okay so it's a, a famous spanish novel and then we are going to be counting each one of the words uh, in the in the novel and how many times it appears okay so the input will be well it will be longer than this for sure so this is just a snippet of the of the novel okay and the novel is in spanish and then we will be counting each one of the words and how many times it, it, each one of the words appears, okay? And then after this, so we will be able to answer this question. Who is mentioned more in Don Quixote? Sancho, the body of Don Quixote, or Dulcinea, the crash of Don Quixote? Well, we will find out by the end of the, this worship. So if you are ready, Go to the if you haven't if you haven't uh, cloned let, let me share again the repo one minute if you haven't cloned yet the repository okay okay here it's been shared okay so let me put here in the chat the link clone it okay and then with your favorite programming environment for Python okay go to the day one and here in the workshop code. So you have everything that you need, okay? So now I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna switch over to my programming environment and we will be starting writing code in a second, okay? So um, to make sure that That the font size is, is is big enough for for the workshop. Please, can you type in the chat the answer to this question? Like anyone? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Aidan, and Joel. Everyone. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. So here I have the the main .py file that is in the repository. Okay. I'm using. Uh, let me show you. I'm using um, Python. 3.9, okay, for, for this workshop, you may use Python 3.7, 3.8, or 3.9, not 3.10 or 3.11 uh, for Python. And then I'm using Apache Bean 2.38 because this is the version that was available today and when, when I installed it, like a, a, some, some time ago, like a, a couple of hours ago, okay? So the requirements that you need to follow this, this workshop is this one, okay? So, 
here I'm, I'm using the variant of GCP for Apache Beam because, well, so I normally use Cloud Dataflow, but you can just install any, you can just install Apache Beam if you want. Okay, so, uh, uh, so you need to install this dependency and have a Python environment ready. And when you have that, uh, so you are all set to, to go for the workshop. Okay, so I'm going to put here the main.py file and we will be starting code in a bit. In the repo, you also have the data that you need for doing the um, uh, this this uh, pipeline. Okay, so let me show you here. So there are two files. Okay, this file is a little bit smaller. Okay, um, and this is Don Quixote taken from the Gutenberg project. Okay, so it's a, it's a book in the public domain, uh, and this is just a sample. Okay, in Spanish muestra. So I apologize because I didn't realize that I put this in Spanish. Okay. So this is a small sample of the of the full novel, and this is the full novel here. Okay, so this is the full uh, novel of uh, Don Quixote. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna go to the code. I'm gonna take this away, and we're gonna be starting writing code. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing is importing Apache Bean. Okay, so Apache Bean, the name of the package is called Apache Bean, but we normally you will see it normally imported as this. Okay, let me here imported uh, as bin that's it okay no without the apache okay there's another bin package in the python package uh, repositories okay that's why the, the name is apache bin but you will see uh, snippets of codes in lots of places with bin dot something okay that assume that you have already imported apache bin as this okay and we are going to create uh, two functions one main function okay we are not going to do anything here yet. Okay. So what we will do here is uh, parse the command line arguments, the input, the output for, for our, uh, for our uh, pipeline. And then we are going to create another method, run pipeline. Okay. And normally in a pipeline, this is a typical pattern. So we have a main method for initial initialization, for parsing uh, command line uh, arguments and so on. And then we have a run pipeline that actually goes, creates the pipeline and runs uh, the pipeline. And the run pipeline uh, function is gonna have two input arguments. It's gonna have our custom arguments, okay? Like the input file, the output location for the data that we're gonna be processing and the bin arguments, okay? That are required in order to create the pipeline. Whether we are going to be running the pipeline in local in the data runner, whether we are going to be running it in Spark, in Flink, in Dataflow. So this is all, all encoded here. We will see later how. Okay. And now we are going to be creating the. Um, uh, so the type of this will be, it will not be list actually. So this will be coming from our parts. You will see later. Okay. So don't, don't worry about the type of these uh, elements uh, yet. Okay. So. Uh, we will see later, and when we are going to be seeing them now, you will see how they how these are. Okay, so this will be a dictionary, and this will be a um, um, special object that our parse uh, uh, returns. Okay, so the first step that we have to do is to create the pipeline options. Okay, so there is a class pipeline options, and I'm using here PyCharm because without the autocomplete, I don't know how to program. I have to confess that. Okay, and here, so we are going to be creating the pipeline options using these bin arguments okay and these are gonna be the options for my pipeline okay and then we are gonna be creating the pipeline using this pattern okay so you I'm sorry this pattern here you have seen this uh, in in the slides from Miren uh, in in, uh, in in a previous talk okay so we create here the pipeline and then we tell the options is this object that we put here and we put a name here Okay, and then we do something with P here. Okay, so we will see now what we will be doing. So this is about bin arcs. And this object here, so typically we will have something coming from our parts that will have member variables for our input command line options. Okay, we will see later how. And typically, because we are going to be counting words, so we will need some input location and we will need some place to write the output. Okay. So I'm, let, let me put it like this. Okay. And we are going to be starting doing something with P here. The first step is reading the data. Okay. And um, for reading the data, Bean has, well, let's see what it has. Let me put here read. Oh, there's nothing here in read. Okay, because I now have to go to input output, input output. 
dot again, read, look, read from text, exactly what I need, okay? And then read from text, okay, if I put here, so it needs a file pattern, okay? And the file pattern is gonna be my input location, okay? So this is the call uh, to, to be able to read data from some location. And this location could be HDFS, it could be a local directory, it could be Google Cloud Storage, it could be S3, it could be anywhere, okay? Um, if we are using Google Cloud Storage, so we will need to have the credentials for this. If we are running in Dataflow, this is al already automatically done. If we are using any other external system, HDFS, whatever, we will need to, to have the credentials and the configuration for the runner to be able to connect to that storage system. But other than that, the code will work uh, in, in the same way, okay? But now this is a transform and we cannot just apply it like here, like in isolation. So we need to put some input, but this is the first step of our pipeline. So the first input will be the pipeline is itself, okay? So this is the beginning of the pipeline and this is our first transformation in the pipeline. Um, because I like putting some labels, okay? This will be, this will be the label for this transformation, okay? So remember, this is the syntax for uh, specifying transformations, okay? So this is the input P collection or the beginning of a pipeline in this case. This is a label that we apply to the transformations for informative purposes, okay? So to be able to locate which part of the pipeline is running, for instance, okay? And then we put this operator and then the transformation. In this case, we are reading the data. And these will be lines of text, okay? Because read from text will read the, the text line by line in the file, okay? And let me see what we have here. Okay, so I need to add some additional uh, line here. And then if you want, this is not mandatory, but it's highly recommended because Apache Bean uh, will do some static typing, uh, type checks when you first run the pipeline. So let me add here some, in, some types, okay? So this will be a P collection um, because these are gonna be like a text of line. So this will be a P collection of Strings, okay, but the types are are um, are, are not um, are not mandatory. Question: The code is not in the repo yet, okay? So I have here a clone of the repo, okay? So see, and and modifying the main.py, so I will be submitting this code to the repo uh, afterwards, okay? Because I need to send a pull request to the owners of the repo of this college, okay? So all the code will be in the repo after the after workshop, the, the very same code that I write here, okay? Okay, so we have already one uh, 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 input P collection. So now here, so if you know this novel, so you know that the beginning of the novel says in en un lugar de la mancha. So what we will have here is a, a P collection with these elements, okay? En un lugar de la mancha, then another element, So this will be the structure of our P collection, okay? Another question, is this is just a static location where all the files exist then? Yes, so, so this is input configuration where we tell the pipeline where our files are located. Here, it will be a local file system because we are running in, in, a, in the direct runner, but it could be any other lo location. It will be an input parameter, configuration parameter for our pipeline, okay? Our pipeline needs to know this in order to be able to work. Okay, so continuing with the P collection. So these are the elements that we will have in the P collection. But um, I cannot count words with this. Okay, so I need to split the words somehow. So I'm gonna split the words by spaces. Okay, so how do I split a string by spaces? So if I have this string, I can easily split it like this. Okay. And this will split, uh, the, this will give me, let me put like in, in pseudo code here, a list with these two words, okay? So let's actually do this with the P collection. <clears throat> How do I apply a function to a P collection? There are different ways. There, there are pardus, that are like the most generic transformation for uh, in Apache Bean, but I don't need to do a full feature pardu for this. I could use just a map, okay? So I could do something like this, lines, um, split words and I'm gonna do a map 
where do I where I apply a lambda function that for each one of the input lines it split it in spaces, okay? And this will be the words, okay? Now, what what's the type here? Well, for sure it will be a p collection, but a p collection of what? So a p collection. Well, so what's the output of this? A list of strings. Exactly. Thank you, Kartik. Okay, so a list of strings. But this is really a little bit. Let me import this if you want. Okay, type in this. So it will be a list of strings. Well, I, I don't like this. Okay, so this is really not. I I, I want to count words. I don't want to count list of strings. How can I get rid of this? Okay. Well, I can unwrap the collection. So the p collection, when it contains a collection, I can unwrap the collection using what flat map. Okay. When I do flat map, what I do is basically is the same that I have done, but I get rid of this. Okay. And now my p collection will be like this. It's actually uppercase here. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It will be like this, okay? A flat map, okay? If the output of the lambda function is a collection, is uh, iterable, a list, okay? I can get rid of that by using flat map, okay? Basically, flat map iterates over the collection that is the output of the lambda function, and it produces an element for each one of the of the elements in the collection, okay? And then, uh, basically, let's say the net effect is that I unwrap the the p collection. Great. Now. The words here, so if you remember the text of the novel, so the novel will contain commas, it will contain like full stops, some words will be in uppercase, some words will be in lowercase. And if I want to count words, the format should be the same, okay? So for instance, if I have here these two words, okay, this one and this one, I want to count these words uh, at the same time, okay? so. So I need to do some sanitization of the words of the of the in the output. Another question. Let me can we do a flat map directly without reading the P collection into separate lines? No, so no, so so you cannot do anything outside the P collection. Everything has to happen inside the P collection. Otherwise, you are not working on the data that you're reading in the pipeline. What are the pros and cons of using Bing's native APIs versus Bing data frames? This is really a very good question because a lot of the stuff that we could be doing here, that, that we are doing here, we could be doing that with data frames too, okay? And, and uh, uh, that, that, that would be another very cool workshop too, I have to say, okay? But uh, uh, but uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's a very long discussion, okay? But uh, yeah, you could perfectly use the data frames API too for, for the same purpose, yes. And now, Fernando. We have a session tomorrow so we could, about sure. data frames. Just to mention, yes, Israel, we do yes. have a full session on data frames tomorrow. So we can go over that, those questions on, on how does it compare and what are the advantages and disadvantages. OK, so I will be there then. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Fernando, to your question. So for sure, we could do lower. OK, so yes, but then um uh, so we need to do probably more more stuff okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna create here another function okay that is gonna be called sanitize word okay where i'm gonna be doing sanitize word okay and the input is gonna be a string okay which is a word and the output is gonna be another string okay and here i'm gonna do things like this okay like lower yes perfect okay but then i'm gonna also do things like this okay let me i'm gonna do just i'm not gonna be very exhaustive okay so i don't want to i don't want to like to bore, bore you to death okay with a lot of sanitization okay and probably it would be better to use some kind of libraries that are many for natural language processing that do this sanitization for us oh, sorry okay so and then here i'm gonna return this word okay so i'm doing here slightly more than just lower okay if i just wanted to do the lower for sure i could have done that here okay okay uh, but it wouldn't no i couldn't have done this okay so i i would have to actually to iterate okay so i could have done something like iterate here okay something like this okay 
something like this. We could have done something like this, okay? But then, so it's more than lower. It's not only this, okay? So, so let's apply a function uh, outside, okay? So, and then if we want to change the sanitization process, let's say I want to here to put a library that actually does a better job than that, than, than, than only this, okay? So I could just modify this function, and, and I wouldn't have to modify the pipeline, okay? Okay. So. Why are we lowering after doing the split? Can we do it after reading the document itself? Um, well, yes. So we could apply here, like to the lines, the lowering, but again, so it's more than the lowering. Okay. But maybe we could apply the sanitization here to each one of the lines. Yes, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So now let me, let me call it like this. I'm going to take the words. Okay. And I'm gonna apply this function here, okay? I'm gonna use a map. So instead of, I could do something like this, okay? For each word, I'm gonna sanitize uh, word W, okay? But this is exactly the same as putting just a pointer to the function, okay? Like a reference to the function. So let me remove this, okay? And instead of doing a lambda with a, on, only one parameter, so I, I do this. It's exactly the same as using the lambda. And now the, here, continuing with this example, the output here will be something like this, okay? And then I will be able to count this word here together with this one, okay? And I should be doing uh, I should be doing more sanitization here, okay? But for the sake of uh, brevity, and someone says annotation miss for sanitize. I did something wrong somewhere, but I don't find it now. So okay, so if the pipeline fails later, so we will find out, okay? So because I don't find where, where did I miss anything. Okay, so okay, so now we have the words, and there are let's say in in a format that I that is able to that I am able to use to count, and I need now to count the words. Okay, if you are used to other big data frameworks, like counting words is kind of like the hello world of big data frameworks. Okay, so in lots of big data frameworks, you would have done something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna do a map. And for each one of the input elements, I'm going to produce a tuple with the word as the, as the key, and then one an element one here as the value. And then I will aggregate together all these. And then because I am aggregating per key, I will be able to count how many words I have. And then I can do another another beam map with the output. Or I, I could, let's say, count. And then I would get rid of the key, of the key, OK? For sure, I could do something like that, or get rid of the key. Well, no, not get rid of the key. So use the key and the value somehow. Okay, I could do something like this, but you don't need to do this in, in Apache Beam. Okay, you can use a combiner. There is a list here of combiners, and there's this top combiner that will count uh, elements. Okay, and then. Uh, sorry, not 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 this combiner. So combiner count. Sorry, this one. Okay, count. Okay, and then the combiners can be applied in different ways. They can be applied globally. Say I want to count how many words are in El Quixote, like in general, in the full novel. I could do this. Okay, and this would give me a p collection of a number. Okay, with a single number. Okay, and then uh, and then sanitize. Okay, and this will give me a single number. It's still wrapped by a P collection, but that will, this will be a, a, a that, that this will be a, a single number. Okay, or I could do per key, but I don't have keys. Okay, so I don't have tuples here, so I can just do the per element, and I don't have to do this trick of um, uh, calculating. Um, uh, calculating the uh, creating the the, the 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 tuple just for counting. Okay. A question in the in the chat, which is very on point. Can we use Python counter functions here to count the words? You could use some of these. Okay. So uh, because some of these functions like len or sum are also combiners. Combiner is any operation that is uh, um, associative and commutative. Okay. And and for instance, 
the length function of Python is associative and commutative, okay? The outputs, so the length of length is the sums of the length and so on. So it, it fulfills all the properties, okay? So I could do, I could do something like combine, but I don't have a combine per element here, okay? Well, I could do something like uh, provide, like probably combine per key, but I would have to add tuples or combine globally, combine values maybe. And I could do maybe something like this, okay? Not sure, okay? Let me see. No, this doesn't like it, okay? But basically you can apply like any combiner, okay? But my recommendation is to actually use the combiner that are included here, okay? Because they are optimized for, for, for Apache Bean. But you can use many, many uh, Python default functions as a combiner, as a replacement for combiners and are applied with a generic combiner. In the katas, uh, in the in the katas, you can add uh, the, the, the uh, okay ah the type annotation yeah thank you so this will be a p collection of strings too okay um, in the katas you have examples of this okay so if you go to the Apache Bean katas there is a, a section about combiners uh, and some of the ex exercises uh, are in this uh, Python let's say standard functions. Okay, and here the output, this will be counted, okay, and here the output will actually not be an integer, okay, so because it will be counted per element, so we will be receiving a tuple, let me import this name, okay, a tuple with the word as the key and the number as the value, okay, so this, is, this will be the output of this. So the combiner per element is giving you a, is giving you a key it's it's i'm not sure it's, if it's faster or not it's just it's just a matter of let's say how you write your code okay but it's really i don't think it's really very very there is in terms of performance i don't think there's really like any meaningful difference so maybe there's some difference but it's probably just negligible okay okay so i have here my my words already counted okay as a tuple okay and now um I want to find the ranking of words. Okay, I just I don't just I don't just want to count words and that's it. I want to do a ranking. Okay, so with all the elements that I have uh, that I have uh, counted here. Okay, so let, let's try to do that. Okay, so let's say let's put here rank it. Okay, and we will see later what's the output type. Okay, and we are gonna use here the words that have been counted, and then we are gonna do. Let me actually here. Put the label okay and here run okay there are other combiners okay and this is the top combiner this is the one that i was using before so full disclosure i have here you don't see it but i have here like the cheat sheets of the workshop just in case i screw up okay and then i look at it and then i got confused and that's why i was using the top before this is now the combiner that we have to use okay top okay and then top has different 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 applications it could be top per key okay but here the key is the word so if we wanted to sort to sort alphabetically for instance uh, and take the first words alphabetically so we could use the per key but it doesn't make make sense here so we want to do something else okay so then we have to use the off okay and then the off has two input parameters okay the number of words that i want to 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 keep okay and i'm gonna put here this in a variable okay okay none of words and then i'm gonna put here another variable so we are gonna put this in an input configuration parameter okay i don't want to i don't want to hard code it okay in the, in the code and then here i need to pass also let me let me see if it auto completes. Okay, well, let me show you here. So we have to use the number and then we have to use what's the key for comparing elements, okay? So what, what is the key that we are gonna use for sorting, okay? And this is actually not the key of the tuple. This is the value of the tuple because we want to sort by the numbers and we want to keep the largest numbers, okay? The words that are more frequent in the number. Let me remove this, okay? So here I have to, pass a function that tells me which part of the input elements I'm gonna use for the comparison for, for sorting. Okay, so I'm gonna pass here um, a lambda function. Let me put it here like this, key, key, okay, lambda function. 
that for each one of the input elements, let's call it X, okay, or T for tuple, okay, yes, it's gonna tell me that I'm gonna use the value, not the key, for sorting and comparing the elements, okay, and then this will give me the um, the the this will give me um, a p collection of a single element, okay. So what happens if we if we need to sort the 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 data that we need to bring the final output of this combiner has to happen in only in one worker okay so the count itself can be done in steps in a hierarchy in different workers but in the end the ranking itself has to happen in one worker only so why is this so think of a p collection so remember uh, minutes talk about the overview of python the p collection is is an unsorted collection and distributed collection of data in a cluster of a lot of nodes. There is no notion of order. You cannot do a random access to a P collection. Give me the element in the position seven. This is impossible with a P collection. There is no position seven. There is just data distributed. So if you sort and you keep sorted data, you cannot keep it here. But if I if I if I get this as output, okay the output will not be sorted, okay? Because the, each one of these elements may be in different workers, okay? In the direct runner, since we are gonna be running in just one thread in our computer and so on, this is not a big deal. But the moment that we are working with big data, with a large amount of data in a distributed cluster, this is not gonna work out. So this combiner, what it returns is this, a list, of the elements that I put as input, okay? So why is this? Because the list keeps the order of data. So a list is a sorted collection. But then because of this, the P collection will only have, will only have one element, a list with the top 10 words or 10 whatever words of a, or the 10 top 10 tuples in this case, with a, um, a, in one in one single list, okay? The list will have more than one element for sure, but the P collection itself will have only one element. And we need to keep this list, okay? Because the moment, we, if we get rid of this list, we will lose the order, okay? So we need to keep this list uh, and, and keep working with it. And now a second word, word of warning. With this combiner, this number here has to be small enough for the ranking to be able to fit in the memory of a single worker, okay? Everything that we have done so far here up, up to here, we, co we could have petabytes of data if we want, okay? And then this count will happen in petabytes of data, okay? But the moment we want to keep only the top words, we cannot do the top of all the petabytes of data, okay? So we cannot sort it like this, okay? There are other ways to sort data and maybe to write it in different buckets in the output. So there are other ways to solve that problem. But for, for using this combiner, we cannot just put here a trillion of words, okay? So, so here for this combiner, the number of words has to be a small number, so the output fits in memory. And this small number will not be that small, okay? For a ranking, it could be 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 perfectly, and the, the list will, keep, it will fit in memory for sure, okay? So this is not a big limitation, but bear in mind, how this works, okay? In order to keep the order in uh, as an element in a big collection, it will have to wrap everything in a list because lists are, are sorted, okay? And but because of this, all the elements in the ranking will be in one single work, in one single element in the big collection. So take it easy with this number. Okay, let me say, okay, count per element. Okay, so there are no new questions in the chat. So let me move on and what makes the rank run on one worker? So the, the fact that we need to keep the order, okay? So if we put, if we, this here, there is no order here, okay? There is no notion of order because a big collection is distributed, okay? And in order to keep order, so we need to wrap things in a list. So this P collection will have only one single element, which is the list. And the list will have several elements for sure, top 10, top 20, whatever, okay? But there will be only one list, okay, one element. And it's because of this that the number has to be small enough because this list, this single element of a P collection, the worker must be able to keep that in the memory of the worker, 
okay? So the list has to be small enough to fit in the memory, okay? So that's why this number cannot be arbitrarily large. It could be very large, 100,000, for instance, a million, okay? But it cannot be arbitrarily large. And Carlos, you can see this webinar later in YouTube, okay? So don't miss it. Uh, this will be uploaded later after the Bean College. Good. So we have already done the rank. Okay, let's write the output. But in order to write the output, I want to write a CSV or any other format, okay? And what I have here is a list of tuples of strings and ints, okay? Well, I could write this as is, okay? If I wouldn't care about my users, okay? But let's try to mm, prettify this, okay? Let me put another function here, pretty printing. Or pretty file, let's call it like that, pretty file. And the input will be a tuple of a string and int. And the output is going to be just one string, okay? That's going to be pretty somehow, okay? So you tell me later if it's actually pretty or not. Uh, and now here, well, so I'm going to do, I don't know. Let me return. Uh, let, let, let's do just a CSV, okay? Where the first element is going to be the word, okay? Let me put here T0. I'm going to put here a comma and then no space and just the second element, T1. Okay. Okay. Does it look pretty? Well, we'll, we'll see later. And now, pretty, I'm not sure if you can say this in English. Apparently not. Okay. Okay. Well, then we just take this here. Okay, and then, okay, so I'm thinking, so how do I apply this, okay? Mm, yeah, let me, let me actually, let me change this, okay? So the, because the input here is not a tuple, it's a list, okay? So let me put here, this is a list, okay? Okay, and then let me put here like, TL, tuple list, okay, for tuple in TL, okay, let me, and but instead of this, okay, let's say pretty string will be like this, okay, empty, and then I'm gonna add this, and here I'm gonna put like a jump, line jump, okay, and now, like this, okay, this looks better, okay, so I, I just, I just, uh, uh, pretty fine one tuple, but I actually have to pretty fine the full list, okay? And I need to keep the order in the list, okay? Because this is a ranking, so I want to see the first word, the top one, okay? The most frequent word, okay? So, uh, so, so I, I do this for loop, and then in this string, I'm keeping that order, okay? They will, I will have first the first word, second the second word, and so on. Okay, let me now, and now because of the functions, because it works, like that, so I can do just like this, okay? Right, beam map, and let me apply this function pretty far here, like this, okay? I could do a lambda again, okay? But uh, so that's actually not not essential, okay? And now let me put this label here, pretty print, okay? And the output here, this will be a p collection of what? Well, because this function, the output is a string. Okay, so here the output will be a string. And now this is already in a format that I can write to some text file in the output. Okay, let me do that. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Write output. Okay, and then I'm going to do bin IO. Let me see what we have. Uh, write to text. Okay, so boom, this Python is really smart, so it knows what, what, what to suggest. And now here, where I'm gonna write this output? This is gonna be the output location, okay? This output location that I haven't used so far, okay? Now, this will be one file or more, depending on how we are working, okay? Well, if this will be one file, okay? This will be one file for sure, okay? In a distributed system, if there are several workers, each one of the workers will write a different file, and then you may have more than one file, Okay, but here, because we are doing this, and then in the end, we are going just down to one worker, we will have only one element in the P collection. This will be a P collection of a single element, and this will generate one file only. Okay. 
Question, why are the labels needed? The labels are not essential, okay? But I recommend you to put labels because, uh, because when you are trying to make sense of uh, your code, for instance, if it doesn't work at the first time when you write it, which is the most normal situation, uh, it helps you to identify where your code is failing, okay? So because you have, let's say, labels that you can recognize easily, okay? It's failing in this transformation or it's failing in this transformation, okay? And this may sound like a small thing, okay? But it's actually, it's, in big pipelines, it's really, it's normally very helpful, okay? And there are also the reasons, like in data flow for streaming pipelines that run in 24 seven, you may update the code of a pipeline, okay? Live without loss of continuity in the processing of the data, with streaming pipelines that have to run forever, okay? And then if you keep the labels, it's easy to substitute one step by a different code by just keeping the label, okay? And then Dataflow will know exactly which parts of the job has to update and which parts doesn't have to touch, okay? And then updates are, let's say, safer, okay? You can always try to update automatically, let's say, let Dataflow do its thing, okay? But if you provide labels, these updates will be much cleaner and much easier, okay? So use labels, okay? Labels are for free, so you don't get charged for them, okay? And they always help. PyCharm Linter is complaining about something at ranked line here, like, ah, uh, here. It's complaining that I have gone over the line, okay? So if I, let me, if I reformat my code, I'm gonna do that, okay? So it's putting this here, okay? So that was the complaint that I'm writing to, that the, the, that the line is too long, okay? And that, that's it. Okay, so I think this is it, except that I haven't done the main function yet, okay? So let me do the main function here, okay? And then we will run it and this will, this will be it, okay? So we still have around 20 minutes, okay? So we have enough time to, to do the, the command line arguments. So this is the pipeline itself, okay? But then the pipeline itself needs some configuration. So how do we do this, okay? I just, let's say, I, I make here like a jump, okay? Like, trust me, somehow this custom R will, will be set. Let's see that. Let's see how we are gonna do that. We are gonna do this in the in the main function. And for this, we are gonna import here R pass, okay? And we're gonna be using, using that. So the pipeline will have command line arguments, okay? Apache Bean has its own command line arguments, okay? For instance, the kind of runner that we're gonna be using, the direct runner, data flow, Spark, Flink, and so on. So somehow we need to make compatible our arguments with the Apache Bean arguments. On one side, if Apache Bean is already defining a name of an argument, we cannot use that name for our pipeline, okay? Like runner, like the word runner, we cannot use that for a custom option for our pipeline. Okay. So we need to be careful on how we choose the names for, for, the, for the options. And then other than that, so we can put as many input custom options as we want. Okay. So for that, I'm going to create here a parser with arc parse. Here, I'm going to create an argument parser. Do I have to use arc parse? You can use anything that you like to for, for Python command line input arguments parsing. Okay. But this one works quite well with the fact that Apache Bean will have its own options different from your custom options and that you need to separate both here in okay uh, in order to be able to pass the options for for bin to bin and your options to use it as as you please okay and this is easy to, to do with our parse and then here in the parser i'm gonna add an argument like for instance this is gonna be called input location okay this is gonna like this let me put it like this so our parse will create a member variable that is called like this okay if i pass an option that is like this okay this is by convention of how our parse works okay so why i can can, can i use this here because i'm putting this here okay minus minus input minus location okay the minus will be substituted by uh, underscore because minus is an operation in python so you cannot use this for a, for the name of a variable and this this will be this will be removed okay and let's put here that this is required okay so you need to specify and then I need also the output location, okay? And this is also the quite true. And then I have to add also, remember the third one, the number of words. And I could say something like default, let me put here, 
1000 and require like for instance this is optional okay and because it's optional so i have to provide the default value whatever okay just just as an example and now i have to parse the arguments okay i have to parse and for parsing there are two two methods that is the parse art and that is the parse known art and this is the one that we're gonna be using so why is this because this is gonna recognize the options that we put here and then it's gonna see that that there are other options that i didn't specify here the bin options runner and so on and it's gonna put me this in a different object okay and then it's gonna be very easy to call um to call uh, uh, the run pipeline function okay so this is gonna return my arguments okay and other unknown arguments okay so this is where it will return Okay, so we can have a look. This is this will be a dictionary, okay? A dictionary of a strings and a strings, I think. Okay. I'm gonna I'm not gonna put the type because I don't actually remember, okay? But it just works, okay? So because this is actually the type that it's it expects here, okay? And instead of calling this, let me just call it being arguments, okay? Because the rest of the arguments should be the arguments that we need for Apache bin itself. And now here we call the pipeline with my arguments and with the bin arguments, okay. And if you want to see the type, let me put it like this, okay? Let me see uh, at type hint, okay? Yes, uh, it would be a list, not a dictionary, okay? So this would be a name space, which is, which is an object of a, my art will be a name space with an object, an object of a, of a art parts, and this would be a list of strings, okay? But this is what a pipeline options needs, okay? So just let me remove this, okay? And let me put it like this, okay? okay. And one last bit, okay, we are going to be running this as an script, okay, so let me put it like this, okay, and then if this is the main, if we are running this as an script, well, we call the main function, okay, without arguments, okay, without arguments, because uh, the arguments will be parsed in the main function here, okay. Any questions so far? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to run this, okay? And hopefully it will it will not fail because we don't have so much time left, okay? And if it fails, well, let's see, I will try to fix it. And if not, so, well, I will do my best, okay? So let me put here the terminal, okay? I'm crossing my fingers, yes. Okay, so, I have here this main function. Okay, I'm gonna use as output, as input. Sorry, as input, I'm gonna use this muestra file. Okay, because it's actually much smaller. Okay, and if everything works with this file, then I will try to run it with the largest, larger file. Okay, uh, which is two megabytes is actually not that large. Okay, so how do I run the pipeline? Okay, so I can I have to run my main dot pi um, uh, uh, script, and then I have to use the option for for Apache Bean, and I think if I'm running in the direct runner, I think this is enough, okay? If I recall well, and then I have to use my my own my own options, okay? Let me put here equal, okay? And this will be data muestra dot txt, okay? txt, okay? And then output location. Location. I'm gonna put out with the slash. Okay, so it actually creates a directory. And, and actually, no, it's not gonna work if, if I don't create the directory. Okay, so let me. Okay, now I have created a directory, and then I recover here the command. Okay, so let me see. I'm gonna press enter. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we. Let me. Let me. Remove this. Let me see what we have here in the out directory. And we have one file, okay, because, well, so I, I could have put some prefix and I haven't put it here. Okay, and we see here the, 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 the words, okay? So, so we have here the, the of in Spanish, that appears a lot of times, que, like a thousand times and so on, okay? So it seems to be working, okay? So let me let me actually go back. It seems to be working. Let me remove out here. Okay. 
and let me change here the location to put here the full book and we can finish this workshop actually answering the question that we posed at the beginning who is mentioned more in el quixote sancho or dulcinea the body of don quixote or the crash of don quixote what do you think so write your comments in the in the chat before we are because we are about to find out okay so hopefully both sancho and dulcinea will be in the top 1000 words of a of a, uh, of here so sancho appears 1504 times and dulcinea only 200 times okay no more comments okay no more questions no more comments okay so sancho appears like mm, almost five times six times more than dulcinea okay so maybe well maybe there's some lesson to be learned here okay but well so i can i cannot i cannot comment more Okay, folks, so thanks all for your questions and for your participation during the workshop. The code will be uploaded in a bit to, to the repo. Okay, so let me upload it here to my, to my, uh, to my fork of the repo. Okay, and then right after the workshop, I will be doing a pull request. Uh, and I, okay, I screw up because I did it to the main. Okay, let me, I have to actually do it. I have to do it to, uh, to a different branch to make the pull request. Okay. Okay, good. I will make the pull request and then it will be in the in the repository of the of the um, of the Bean College. Okay, so now it's time for questions. We are done. Okay, let's see if we have some questions. Thank you, uh, Israel. That was pretty on the edge and 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 we learned many things uh, not only beam uh, but many other things and let's see um, we have some questions that are coming in um, I'll take the ones on logistics on beam college like when will the recording be available on YouTube? Uh, please give us a couple of weeks. We need to edit it and trim it to, to remove the dead times. Uh, and yeah, we need to encode those videos. But yeah, give us a couple of weeks and they will be on the BIM College YouTube. Uh, and then how, first question, how would we run it on DataFlow? Would, would just... Is, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, so please continue. No, would it just be a matter of changing the runner argument? It would be that, and the fact that you have a project in Google Cloud Platform to be able to run this for sure. Okay, so like for instance here, so I have this the cloud config. Okay, so I have this project here. Okay, if I wanted to run this in 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 Dataflow, so I ha I would have to put here Dataflow, but then I need additional options like the project where I'm gonna be running. Okay, like for instance this one here, the region where I'm gonna be running. US Central, wherever, okay? And now the input locations, this, this, this should be a path in Google Cloud Storage, okay, somewhere, and, and same with the output, okay? So this should be like somewhere, whatever, okay? And then I'm gonna need also to specify a temp location, okay? And I think that's it, okay? So with this, uh, but but if you want to know more details, so, so check the documentation of Dataflow. So this is specifying the documentation with this. So the, the same example will run in, in Dataflow for sure, assuming that you have already the data somewhere in Google Cloud Storage. You need to upload it and so on. Okay. But the, other than that, it will run just as is uh, in Dataflow. Awesome. Uh, we have a question from Padma Saran. Uh, is it essential to mention the type of variables in BIM or is that just like a recommendation or best practice? It is not essential. So, uh, so Python can now with these uh, types here, but Python actually doesn't check the types. Okay. So if say that this returns a totally different thing, so this will not fail. Okay. So this is kind of only like information for the programmer, like metadata. Okay. 
However, Apache Beam makes the check, okay? So Apache Beam will check that the output of this Lambda is compatible with the type that you put here in the AP collection, okay? So it will be, it will do some kind of static analysis when you first trigger the pipeline. And this helps catching errors that are not obvious, okay? So say that, I don't know, like for instance, here in the, in the sanitized world, if I change the type here, okay? If I change the type here, this will not complain. This will work in Python, but I think let me let me let me try. Okay, so let me try direct final to see if this actually complains. See, this complains. Okay, why? Because I changed this type. Okay, but if I go to Python itself, okay, if I go to Python itself and I and I import this and then and I calculate. Uh, and I do this, okay? See, this function here, the type is not being respected, okay? So because I'm returning a string instead of an int, okay? So Python doesn't care about this, but Apache Bean does, okay? And it's telling you, okay, look, you put a type, but what the, the definition of the function doesn't match the type that you have put in the P collection. So maybe there's something off, okay? So this is why I recommend putting types, but it's not essential. Okay, so. Thank you. Um, Kennedy Uche asks, what's the best way to create a, cust a custom Beam IO connector? He had a great deal of issues creating one for a project with Azure Data Lake storage. Okay, so here I'm gonna actually do some, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna put like a commercial here, okay? Sure. Come to the Beam Summit 2022, okay? <laughs> and the, the, this will be also online. And in the program here, Miren and myself, no, it's on, it, yes, here, here, this one here, okay? Le, le, okay, let me, let me, let me, sorry, let me go to the page. Okay. Here we'll explain how to do that with a new type of do functions or a new type, well, it has been around for a couple of years already, okay? That uh, simplifies how to write input output connectors, okay? And Miran and myself will explain how to do this in Python in a hands-on workshop in the Apache Bean Summit, okay? This week, I think it's the last week for free registration for Apache Bean Summit, okay? For online attendance, okay? So if you try to, if you want to attend online, register now and then to come to the workshop and we will cover that. It, it is not a straightforward, but it's not really, it's not, it's not, um, it's not so, so complex either, okay? And in the meanwhile, if you don't want to wait until July for, for this, if you, go, if you go to the documentation here of Apache Bean, and then this is loading super fast, uh, common line patterns, uh, custom IO, uh, uh, custom IO connectors here, Just give me one second. I don't know why the. Well, let me let me take note of this. Here you will have more information about how to do this. Okay, uh, but um, uh, there are lots of let's say lots of details that are missing there. Okay, so it's a, it's a high level document. Okay, in the in the workshop we will include full details and we will do two connectors, one in batch and another one in the stream. Okay, awesome. so. Uh, we have another question for Fernando. He just mentions that in an earlier session, uh, the presenter uh, input the, well, process the argument in a Python class form. Uh, is there any advantages in that versus how you did the uh, arc parser? It's a matter of my, uh, Taste. preference. Okay. okay. So it's, it's right here. Okay, so this is probably the recommended way. Uh, I have lots of bad habits too, okay? So I have been doing uh, input arguments as I have shown in, in this example, okay? Like for very long and I always do it like that, but probably this is a better way, yes. Awesome. And yeah, Fernando was apparently live coding and he was able to run the example locally. Thank, thanks a lot for confirming that it works. I appreciate the feedback. So I think that's it. Thank you so much, Israel. Uh, that was pretty fun.